And now it's the ATF. Except with the ATF, they don't even claim to be experts. The director said so last week. Last week in a hearing in front of Congress in the Appropriations Committee, he was asked about firearms. He said, I'm not an expert in firearms. Not an expert, but still trying to run Americans' lives. You would think the head of the agency tasked with regulating the entire firearms industry, a constitutionally protected industry, would know something about firearms. Earlier this year, the ATF issued a rule that unilaterally puts new restrictions on Second Amendment rights. This rule redefined firearms with stabilizing braces as short-barreled rifles so that they could be controlled under the Gun Control Act of 1968, the National Firearms Act of 1934. There are approximately 40 million firearms with stabilizing braces currently in circulation. The pistol brace was created for use by disabled person, including disabled veterans. These individuals could lose the ability to use these tools and as a result, may not be able to operate their firearm. Under the new rule, these firearm owners will be required to obtain special registration, surrender or destroy their brace by the compliance date, or they will face severe criminal penalties. This is not the result of a decision made by Congress. Congress didn't change the law. No bill was introduced in this committee, passed by this committee, passed by the House, passed by the Senate, and signed by the President. Nope, this rule turns law-abiding gun owners into felons is a result of unelected bureaucrats simply enacting a new regulation. And that's not how it's supposed to work in our great country. Congress writes the laws and the executive branch enforces them. Here, the executive branch has taken power from Congress in deciding what the law should be and that, change, and that they change themselves with enforcing, charge themselves with enforcing, excuse me. Director Dettelbach has in essence become a one-man Congress. Notably, this decision runs counter to the ATF decision under President Obama in 2012 that a firearm equipped with a stabilizing brace was, quote, would not be subject to the National Firearms Act and those controls. An independent analysis of financial harm to the firearms industry from the pistol brace ban has been estimated to exceed a billion dollars. Law-abiding firearm owners relied on this ruling for a decade before having the rug pulled out from under them this year by Director Dettelbach's ATF. And it's not just with the stabilizing brace rule that the ATF is attacking the Second Amendment. They've also targeted firearms businesses by creating pretenses to shut them down. The new classifications are left purposely broad and allow the ATF to revoke the license, licenses of FFLs for simple technical and non-material paperwork violations. In 2022, ATF revoked over 90 licenses, more than any year since 2006. This is an attack on the Second Amendment, pure and simple, plain and simple. And I want to thank Director Edelbach for appearing before us today, and we look forward to hearing from him and his taking our questions. With that.